Welcome once again, audience. Um, thank you for joining us today on on screen and on audio. We have Rob Greenberg. Welcome, oh, Rob. Hi there, hi there. Green Mountain, Monteverdi. Okay, I'll I'll put that in. <laughs> um, okay, so Rob, you are an audio engineer by trade. Yes, pretty much. Well, post production audio. Post production Man. audio, yeah. but your background, um, you have a very wide variety of like industries all relating to the to audio. Yeah, Would you just absolutely. mind giving us a rundown of of what what your experience is? All right, cool. I started. It was in the seventies. I was yes. playing in bands. Wow. Okay. I wanted to be a rock star and. Uh, while playing in bands, the sound obviously becomes a thing as well. You've got to set up and get things sounding right on stage or in the rehearsal room. And then that evolved when we were playing gigs and that there'd be concerts in particular. There were these concerts that used to get put on polo to bands. And Des Woolrich, Midnight Flyer Studios, in those days, he used to put on these concerts. The third year music was Dave Marks and... Uh, any case, long story short, I got involved in helping with setups and doing live gigs with them as well. Back in the 70s, 76, we went, would go into Soweto in 77 to the amphitheater, and there'd be bands like the Soul Brothers and Teta and Jaluka. They weren't really famous yet. They were part of Des's thing. He actually helped them out as well. And uh, yeah, we used to do these gigs, five white guys, 15,000 people come to watch a show. And I remember one gig, the one rack of amps went down. Oh, okay. <laughs> the crowd started murmuring and we had what we called the Tulani guards looking after us, the guys with Shambox. And uh, we had to think quickly and we just lost the highs and we got the show on the road and we heard to the, uh, catastrophe. So it yeah. was quick thinking. Live, yeah, live gigs that yeah, you had to think quickly and rewire. Des was brilliant like that. Mm. But I got a job at EMI doing tape duplicates. I was looking for something in music as well. I got, I got into the cassette duplication at EMI in, in the tape plant, which I used to work night shift. And mm. I, I did that. Then I became production manager of the tape plant, the cassette plant. Mm. Uh, and the cassettes at that point were 30% of sales compared to 70% of records. From there, I went into the cutting rooms, into the record cutting rooms. Mm. And I started cutting records. So in those days, you had records, LPs, acetate. Yes, and, uh, yes. There was a lathe, a cutting lathe. They had a ruby stylus that... Wow. would cut into it and uh, it would cut there. You had to work out mathematically mm. for the swing, the bass swing. So you would know sure. that uh, each master tape you'd get, they were only like 30 minutes long, a master tape, that's the yeah. longest they would be. But uh, the LP would side would depend on how much bass you could push. Mm -hmm. If you listen to an LP, a record, Compared to a CD or download, whatever you want, and you listen to the two, go into a studio, you listen to the same speakers. I've, I've done the test ACDC that was on a record from Germany compared to a CD from Germany, the same thing. Mm. It's chalk and cheese. And I know that with an LP, you couldn't have a frequency higher than 12.5K. That was as high as you could cut because okay. it was a mechanical cutting thing. And because of the swing, you wouldn't have anything below 60 hertz. Okay. Because of the swing, otherwise it'd be too. So when when they say to you, you've you've got CD that's 20 to 20, but it's compressed. Mm. It's, it's a compressed, compressed audio yeah. signal. So you know, you know, analog. This is why still the rock in particular still record on tape. Uh, wow. You look at yeah. If you you look at Matt Langer, he does all the main rock guys and everything. Robert Mutlunger, wow. Aerosmith and ACDC and, and uh, hundreds, Shania Twain was his way he did that stuff. He still records on tap and then he does his his editing then gets done on Pro Tools or whatever the case is. Mm. So you're transferring across from that domain, but you've still got that digital the the, the 
analog distortion coming through, which you need. Like a voice is purely analog. That's why I use a Neumann mic, hmm. which is got a huge, big diaphragm and it just loves voice compared to some of these new fancy things you got that are quite reasonably priced and they sound okay. But hmm. you know, if you listen, it's the same as the, 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 the speaker thing. You know, we used to listen on huge tannoys in the studio. They were the K thirty eight or eights. And everyone had them, and then you had the order tones or the Yamaha NS10, the the near field horrible things that would make your ears physically sore even at the end of the day. <laughs> so piercing, oh. I hated them. I could never work with them. Mm. And uh, you know, and the sound then was about big sound. It was the bigger the sound you could get it. It was the way it was now. With it being compressed so far down, and you've got everyone's got earphones in, it's not really the same thing. I mean, no, you know, you've got a big set of speakers, you've got that air moving. But yeah, so yeah, thank you for that that uh, <laughs> trip down memory <laughs> lane for records. Um, yes. But yeah, so another question is: um, so I asked, I told you about um, how creativity is very important in the indus- in this industry. Um, yeah, I think- even even having things very regimented and set and having templates for things, they don't always prepare you. No, you can't. I mean, every job has to be different. It's not the same. Not one size fits all. Ever, ever, never, never. I mean, uh, you know, you know, if you this is what we're even talking about equipment. It's exactly the same thing. One size doesn't fit all. So. Uh, it's creative in the thing that you've got to make it work to the way you want it to work. You know, I read a book many years ago by George Martin. Mm. Called All you need is ears. You should get it. Read what he 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 he, he, he was the guru of this whole kind of thing of recording. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, if it sounds good to you, is the bottom line. It should sound good to everyone else, but. As you rightly saying, there has to be a creative spark within someone to be able to create because it is creation. It is mm. creation very much. The first person who hears the recording besides the artist is the recording engineer. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and uh, you you have to get into the headspace of the person you're with, where it be music, be it television, be it radio, be it whatever. If you have a producer or director or an artist. Uh, you got to connect with them. I think that's quite an important thing is being able to connect in the creative side. I think you're either born creative or not creative. There are a lot of people who aren't creative in any way. Mm. They rather gravitate towards uh, a steady kind of job in accountancy or something, you know, <laughs> or an employer or whatever. But uh, you know, as people where they say, "Well, get a real job." Uh, generally, you, you from well, I started playing guitar when I was like 12 years old or something. And bands, from well done. 30. Yeah, as I say, I mean, uh, you, you know, creativity. I think is 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 in us. Some people have different. Some people are creative with numbers. Others are creative with with thought. Others are creative with painting. Or so I, th- I think we all have a, a certain element, and then we kind of find our little niche mm. eventually I, I like what you're saying and it com- I think what it comes down to is from the, the author you mentioned is it's like it's 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 working with what you get it's it's working with what you have and don't don't try to fit anybody else's template for doing things because you're there now with what you have and not every instance will give you a template's work but it will give you something and creating something from what you're given is important um especially in this in this industry um i don't know if you would agree with what i'm saying absolutely i mean there's no such thing you know you 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 can work on like i've been working on the same program for over 20 years hmm. uh, on launch and uh, i um, you know, there have been clients of mine that do a 
they aren't, I don't work for them per se. They are clients, the producers are clients of mine. Yes. Um, and there's no two mixes that would ever be the same. Mm. There's no chance. You know, the, the, the story is different. The mood is different. The emotion is different. Um, if you're working to picture, I grew up listening to radio. Radio is theater of the mind. Mm, I love that grow, term, by the way. Yeah, they they make pictures in your head. You had to. You would do Mark Saxon and Sergei or squat cars. The radio, they would do sound effects. I mean, that was amazing recording as well. They would do it all live. Mm. In the studio, five of them together, someone doing footsteps and making noises and whatever. The um, foley. Well, they'd do live foley, yeah. Mm. And people would play in things. It was quite a thing. You had to be together and you didn't have tape, even, uh, tape machines in the beginning. It was acetate. So you'd cut straight onto the record. So there's no way of of stopping yeah. once you've scratched the, you put a new one if you've screwed up. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, the, the thing has evolved, but the creative side must always be there. You know, if you're just pumping out stuff that has no creative then it's news yeah you know yeah it's just information for people to 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 think about and then think about something else completely different because it isn't inspiring or is it it isn't something they can enjoy yeah but the interesting thing is (laughs) you can sway the mood of the news piece by the music (laughs) that's true and by the read the way it's read you know so uh, there's so many variables into the thing of of the creative side it has to start at the top I suppose the director or or the producer record producer or but the engineer is very much part of the whole process because we're the ones who kind of tell them if it's going to work or not and mm. then we guide them and say no you know and after years and years of experience you become more experienced than the producers are themselves so they do mm. tend to kind of listen to you I mean you know if you've got a news thing and Anthony Hopkins decides he wants to do it like Shakespeare and it's a bad news be about people dying you decide you're going to put a bit of funny music on then it's, it wouldn't really work too well no no it's quite weird when I mix a, a TV program invariably I'm not listening to what's being said mm. I'm kind of been listening to I'm not sure really I'm listening to kind of what shouldn't be there when I'm mixing it or what would be now I'm not listening to the words at all you're mm. listening to you're listening to kind of the you're, you're imagining yeah. what somebody would would feel when they hear this I guess your, your... Yes, absolutely. You want to create the mood. Yes. The emotion, the feeling. Mm. You um, know, and, no? and the mood, yeah, you, this is what I say, you need to get into the mood of the thing. Yeah, and, and, and part of, um, I guess, being, being in the industry you're in is being like the middleman for a lot of things you your tastes also it can't dictate how you enjoy things anymore um because you come across so many different types of things um and yeah we're getting into the mental health section of this thing but it's it's you can't really say i'm a rock guy and i'm gonna do the best i can with this quieto thing but I'm not really going to enjoy it. It's you have to be open to different types of experiences as well. Totally, yeah, you got it. You, you, you've, yeah. If you if you want to do sound, if you just want to do music, then you can do music. Or if you just want to do rock, you can do rock. Some people do speak like you said that you've got with Matt Langer. He's the kind of the rock god these days of uses and whatnot. And then you've got Trevor Rabin, who was a South African guitarist, who's now overseas. He does, he's the main score. He does film scores. Fantastic musician, fantastic guitar player. Played for Yes, played for Rabbit here. Um, and uh, yeah, he's kind of progressed into the, he's got the mood and he, he, he scores movies, good big movies, lots mm. of movies. Oh, you know, okay. and uh, so I think once you start specialising, 
you get to the point so you specialize either you want to just do yeah you know, music or you want to do tv or you want to do radio or you want to do game shows i mean you know games would would you agree then that um creativity is an outlet an outlet yeah. for f- to to do something in yourself and how how important would you say is creativity to just keep sane and to just keep on going it's a creative job and i like it and i i i like what i'm doing for the one weird side of it is i cannot watch drama anymore i cannot watch a <laughs> yeah. series i cannot I watch agree. a movie um i i, I get too kind of involved in the background almost and yes. i'm not sure what it is uh, it, it's just if you don't agree <laughs> with things and, uh, you, and and you know it's being acted i, I think is mm. the thing as well i, I like dockets I, i i enjoy dockets that i watch but uh, just i've worked on so many dramas i did soap operas jeez man mm. it only 200 of those things and So what is that other thing on ETV um scandal was it the 200 of that and then geez there were movies and series and, and yeah so from the mental side of things I, i i think the job has to be the job it has to be uh, this is I'm creative here but I, I mm. I'm, I'm creative in other ways I love cooking and I love creating in the kitchen nice Nice. So nice. for me that's I love eating. May not be able to tell <laughs> Who does it? Angle but <laughs> So for 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 me that's great. I still play some guitars and uh still write some songs and tunes and whatever. And uh yeah, you know, the creative side uh, becomes the the job um we are st- I st- as I said I still enjoy it but mm. the side effect has been that watching television or movies is well you can't do it really anymore yeah it's a definite thing in psychology where you're too involved in a, in the making of something that you can't really yeah. enjoy the product without thinking about how to make it um and there is a way to come around it where you just th- when you just enjoy one certain thing but that's only if it c- ups if it's up to your standard and yeah unfortunately yeah no absolutely if you go i mean i mean i i, I was always very really much when i watched movies and that it was always certain actors i liked because i knew they were never bad to then go by directors and whatever the thing is um but i think now with the advent of this online TV we've been using online for years now besides Netflix there's just so much else there mm. and you tend to take it for granted it's like the youngsters the music is all downloaded it's just so easy and they ask got records LPs when I was a kid I used to work when I was 15 years old and I used to buy records that sure. was my thing I played in bands and I would walk home from Brahms to Elbra That's no, kind no, of no, what the yeah. 70s were synonymous with going to record stores and hanging out with friends and playing music. Absolutely, yeah. For me I mean, at least. Such a yeah, absolutely. It's such a big part of of life of music it always has been, you know, and, and grew up with and I loved it and and I wanted to be a rock star. <laughs> so, uh, music, music I still love listening to. Mm. Uh, I've still got I still prefer listening to CDs compared to the online stuff. Mm. Uh, I've got records and fortunately I don't have a good turntable anymore. Oh, wow. and, and, and and records are a mission. Yeah. Let's face. It. You know that you, you start getting that kick it has the crackle yeah. under you. And probably and, getting a good turntable as well. Yeah, I mean there's there's a big swing back now overseas where people are cutting records because of the quality. Yeah. For certain people it's very expensive to buy uh-huh. a record but, but but if you google it you can see you can buy people who've mm. got cutting lathes and they producing records. Wow. But yeah, it's yeah. um so you're so you're of the opinion then that it's good to know where 
you can relax and good to know where you can just enjoy yourself for your own mental benefit because because other types of media and just doing like movies for your sake um, it's not really gonna have the same effect and it's not gonna really help you relax after a tough day's work definitely not you know it's definitely not for me I read a lot that's good I read every night I get into bed and I read for a while mm. I've got a kettlebell uh, which makes it so easy <laughs> so you don't get anyone awake and uh, but yeah I mean <clears throat> yeah I certainly can't relax going to watch a movie I can relax watching the TV with sport that I can watch <laughs> quite easily because there's no creative in it there you you get totally engrossed in you don't care what the oak's saying or how he's saying it I mean if the sound's bad it starts irritating you just turn it off yeah <laughs> and you're not going to lose the story you know no, so you know it's the thing I mean yeah you you kind of get involved in the sport in a different mm. way yeah Compared and there's the benefit of talking about it over the water cooler again absolutely and you can get up and you can go make a cup of coffee or grab a beer or whatever you want to do come back and you still know what's going on yeah yeah <laughs> you know, just i like just can't <laughs> um feel the same way about golf for some reason <laughs> <laughs> no, somehow, you know, golf is, is not something I ever would watch. So I, 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 I must admit, I've, I've, I've sat and I've watched and I marveled at how these cameramen yeah. can actually find that ball. And, and then a friend of mine who was a cameraman who used to do that, he said, no, the ball flares out of the lead so you can see it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's good to know that even... Even in an industry like yours, there is need for just relaxing at times. And it's good to know it's if you need to relax, it's it's supposed to be even that is knowing what specific things work for you um, and taking what you have and working with that in a creative way um, as much as you can. But just knowing there are certain ways you do relax and some you don't. Um, and especially in in times like these with the lockdown where you only have your four walls um, unfortunately um, yeah so um, thank you very uh, much once again Rob I really appreciate the chat um, well, it's nice chatting nice tripping down memory lane as it were <laughs> yes it, it was really fun I'm for the pencil of you, I hope. no 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 I'm really appreciative of every type of history I'm hearing um, and yes thank you once again audience for joining us and see you next time <laughs> <laughs>